Good evening and welcome to the Channel Studios here in London for your international news around the world in five. The ex-US Defence Secretary James Mattis has denounced President Donald Trump, saying he deliberately stokes division. It's after protests continued for the ninth night in anger over the death of unarmed black man George Floyd at the hands of police in Minneapolis. Large crowds of protesters continued to gather late into the night in Portland, with some incidents of vehicles being set on fire. In Brooklyn, New York, the police charged into a crowd defying the local curfew. This happens as prosecutors in Minneapolis filed a murder charge against one officer already in custody for the killing of Mr. Floyd, and three more have been accused of playing a role in his death. The Brazilian president has once again criticised the lockdown measures in his country to halt the spread of coronavirus, while his government announced a record high number of deaths. Jair Bolsonaro has once again played down the virus, warning that the economic fallout from quarantine measures will be worse than the virus itself. Meanwhile, the pandemic does not show any sign of slowing down in Brazil, with almost 30,000 new cases and more than 1,200 deaths recorded in just one day. There are now 555,383 total confirmed cases in Brazil and 31,199 deaths. There have also been protests over lockdown measures in Senegal, with demonstrations in the capital Dakar over a nationwide curfew. Protesters set tyres on fire and threw stones at security forces after a three-month-long dusk-to-dawn curfew. The unrest in Senegal's capital followed similar action in the holy city of Touba a night earlier. The UN has warned the political and security gains made by Somalia in recent years could be at risk if quick action is not taken by the international community to help avert a major humanitarian crisis. The effect of devastating floods, desert locusts and the impact of COVID-19 is threatening development in the country. That's according to the Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs. Close to 500,000 people have been displaced by recent floods in Somalia's central regions, while a severe locust infection threatens food security and nutrition for many. Tens of thousands of people in the Philippines may have been killed in the war on drugs since mid-2016 amid near total impunity for police and top officials. That's according to a new report of the United Nations. The crackdown on drugs launched by President Rodrigo Duterte after winning an election on a platform of crushing crime. Since he took office, police would systematically force suspects to make self-incriminating statements or risk facing lethal force. Lawyers and activists raised the alarm this week over a new anti-terrorism bill published by President Duterte, warning of draconian and arbitrary provisions that could be used to target his detractors. German public prosecutors have announced they are investigating a 43-year-old German man on suspicion of the murder of Madeleine McCann, the British girl who disappeared in Portugal in 2007. State prosecutor Hans Christian Walters said the prosecutors believed the girl may be dead. McCann disappeared from her bedroom on May the 3rd in 2007 during a family vacation in the Algarve while her parents were dining with friends nearby in the resort of Praia de Luge. Russia's President Vladimir Putin has declared a state of emergency after 20,000 tonnes of diesel oil leaked into a river within the Arctic Circle. The spill happened when a fuel tank at a power plant near the Siberian city of Noritsk collapsed last Friday. President Putin expressed anger after discovering officials only learnt about the incident two days later. In a televised video conference, Mr Putin attacked the head of the company over its response. The spill has contaminated a 350 square kilometre area so far. The incident has prompted stark warnings from environmental groups. In the South Korean capital Seoul, bars and restaurants have turned to robots to meet the new customer awareness towards hygiene and contactless services. A recent second wave outbreak originating from nightclubs in Seoul has forced many establishments to shut their doors for good, and robots seem a good solution to cut out personnel costs and assure a high hygiene standard. And finally, Australia's Prime Minister's press conference to announce a fourth stimulus package briefly turned comical when he and reporters were told by a local to get off his grass. 10,000 Australians... Sure. Let's just move back from there. Scott Morrison travelled to a construction site in Gugong to make a series of announcements when he was interrupted. Hey, guys, I've just reseated that. The Prime Minister quickly obliged, giving the man a thumbs up and an all good. 
And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the Channel Studios in Lagos.